This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. Welcome back, everybody. Hour two of Hot Mike, ready to rock and roll on this Monday. Appreciate Jeff Colfax stopping by. Full coverage of Bison Open Day of Fall Camp coming up on our news tonight on WDAY at 6 and 10 and much more uh, tomorrow on Hot Mike. UND will get things going on Wednesday when they officially open up fall camp for 2024. As many questions we were asking about the Bison, UND has some similar ones as well as they get ready uh, to launch into a new season as they open up again with a Big 12 opponent, much like North Dakota State does. UND will take on Iowa State with Tyler Roll and Noah Pauly and Eli Green and Matt Campbell's team that uh, figures to be a force in the Big 12 this upcoming year. Our pleasure to welcome back the man who covers everything UND football, Tom Miller from the Grand Forks Herald, joins us on this Monday morning, uh, getting his own ramp up, acclimatization period uh, going on now to get ready for fall camp 2024. Uh, read your story on Saturday. Let's first start on the the stuff off the field, the new offices. It's just everything is different surrounding UND football with the new turf, the new offices. Get What, what are the new digs like? Yeah, they're pretty uh, they're pretty nice when you consider, you know, the the setup at Memorial Stadium, oh. which was, uh, you know, just just really dated. Um, it, it was a cool building, but, you know, um, it, eventually it just really wore down. And then, you know, since COVID, what, four years here, uh, North Dakota has been the football staff has been in Starcher. So you kind of an academic building, a little out of the beaten path for for what they're doing. Um, I think they're really looking forward to staff being in one hallway, the yeah. football players being in a locker room that's connected to their real facilities here. Um, you know, it's 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 still a few months away from really all coming together, but um, they're taking some of the first steps, and I think that's got a lot of a lot, a lot of folks excited. Just the just the buzz, right, with it, just some energy that hasn't been there. Yeah, and I think you're seeing that with some of the recruits they've picked up in the last stretch of the last few weeks you know how many how many times have, have i been able to write about a, a kid who's got 20 division one offers yeah. you know things like that I, I don't i don't know how much that's happened in the last i don't know 10 years so um I, I think you're seeing them pick up a different recruit and i think the uh the building progress um whether it's football or all the way across campus has made a big difference on uh recruitability for the program i'm looking at a photo in your article of bubble looking out at the practice field from his new office that alone he's got a big smile on his face that just has not been not it's not been possible over the since his tenure really yeah and i i had to ask him you know like uh does it hit different as from what memorial stadium means to you than it would for just the average coach and he gave he gave some pretty good thoughts but i i, I think it's it's hard not to hit on that 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 uh you know, this is uh, such a such a facility that that has been important to to Bubba Schweigert and process career. The new turf as well, just said that is a newness on on the uh, in Memorial Stadium. That alone, Tom, also adds a new uh, step in things when they begin practice on Wednesday. Yeah, they haven't practiced outdoors on that turf for um, a few years. I, yeah. I think it was. A few years ago, uh, Luke Skokna went down on a swing pass and and he grabbed his shoulder kind of. And I, I don't know if they ever went back out there again. I think there's just kind of that might have been the last straw. Of like, OK, uh, this turf just isn't nice enough for us to <laughs> to use. And uh, because because Iowa State utilizes uh, grass or, or a semblance of grass, grass sand, um, you and you'll be practicing both on that turf outdoors and and on the um, the grass field there closer to the train tracks uh, to the south side. I was going to ask as well, how much will they use the indoor still for fall camp? Yeah, I think there's still going to be some of that. Um, you know, you got to remember too, we've been around Division One coaches. They don't overly like when they can't control all of the elements, and now you and D will be practicing outdoors, facing, you know, I don't know. 50, 75 uh, apartment windows facing down on them that, that a coaching staff can't control. Um, so I, I think uh, like if on game prep week, they're certainly not going to be outdoors. Now I, I, I think that it's a little silly, right? How, how uh, nervous uh, football coaches get about not knowing, you know, one person sitting on the sidelines. Um <laughs> 
but that that's going to be a that's mm -hmm. going to be a challenge for them. I think you know I don't you're probably not going to work on your um, you know your triple flea flicker reverse <laughs> hail mary um, with you know facing an apartment complex. Yep. That, that'll be something new. I guarantee the week of the Bison game they're not going to do that. That's for darn sure, right? Yeah, I don't. There's <laughs> there's no week that gets shut down quite like. Uh, <laughs> Bison week. Yeah, they're not going to be outdoors facing the apartments. Now, the big story was clearly on Friday. You tweeted about it. We talked about it earlier in the show. Is the new green jersey, which, by the way, they finally got the color to match the helmet, which I know has been a pain in the butt, but it looks sharp. I'm a big fan of this one. Yeah, I, I think it's funny. Sometimes, like, you can look across, uh, you know, if the, if the coaching staff doesn't coordinate exactly what kind of like iteration of their polos they're wearing. I mean, they, <laughs> UND has really had a whole lot of variations of yes. that Kelly Green, Yes, right? I mean, I, I quit trying to decide whether or not uniforms are cool um, or uncool. I I don't know, um, but I, 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 I tend to like this font better. Yep. I think just from a logistical standpoint, uh, it was really annoying in the press box not to be able to tell uh, who's who, especially the the – Adam Zavalny, Garrett Mog, 39 and 89. We yeah. got two, like, six foot four, 225 pound uh, guys who look identical in all other ways. So, um, <laughs> yeah, looking forward to the newness. Uh, if, it gets all, if it gets college football players all excited, good for them. Are they getting rid of the gray ones? The gray I was never a fan of. What, what, do, you, what do you know on that? I'm not sure. I would be surprised. I don't think there were a lot of fans of that that gray look. Yeah. Um, maybe even fewer fans of the, the green look. Um, yeah. But I, like I say, I stay out of the uniform stuff. I, I don't trust myself to like, I'm just not that cool. So I, <laughs> I let other people decide. Neither am I. I just, I always love chatting about it because it's a, uh, it's a thing that people talk about. There's no doubt. Absolutely. Let's actually talk about the, the players on the field. Bubba hit on a couple things. I know uh, you asked him during Valley media day quarterback seems like the, the one everyone wants to go to, but Offensive line can't be ignored either of what the Fighting Hawks lost. So wh how much of your attention's on that when fall camp opens on Wednesday? Yeah, a lot. You know, it's going to be impossible not to watch that QB battle play out, the nature of the position. But 100% that North Dakota went from a place where offensive line should have carried this program through some of this transition. Yeah. Um, but when, when Sam Hagen and – and um, Kate Boru, Kate Boru yeah. left after spring ball because yep. you were going to lose Easton Kilty. That was almost some anticipation of that. Um, you maybe it had that built into your framework. Um, but going from only losing one guy at one point to losing four guys, yeah. um, and then and then you you know you're going to have a new offensive line coach, a new offensive coordinator. Um, boy, a lot has to play out well. And, and you know we've talked a million times the. The transfer portal offensive line game is a very uh, uncomfortable place to be. Yep. You don't you don't fix things very well in the transfer portal offensive line game, and so I'm very curious to see. I feel like I have to see some of those bodies for myself, my own eyes, um, before I make judgments on what they added. Uh, we'll see. What are the day. What are the coaches telling you at that spot though that they like so far? Well, you know what what I had learned from the coaching staff that was previously in place and now a yeah. new staff, you know, so um, it'll be interesting to see if, if, if guys are viewed in the same way, but there's, there's some players like a, like a Trey Staden who, who came in was a tight end, um, you know, put on enough weight that you went from 250 to 285. And now they, they always kind of have believed that he could be a, a really good tackle. Um, there's a couple other guys, but I just kind of believe that there was a, if Borud and Hagen would have stayed put at UND, you would allow those guys to have one more year yeah, of proper yeah. maturing. You just, you are taking so many guys that should, should have one more year and you're throwing them into a fire. Uh, they're going to have to sink or swim fast here where they, that probably should have happened in 2025, but it's going to happen in 24. And Seth Anderson now is the lone returner and Seth has, has certainly impressed and, and done a nice job. And now he's going to be the anchor of the offensive line since the lone returner. Isn't that wild? It's really wild. Camp went into went into last year going, well, I think they can rely on Anderson, yeah. but boy, it's not a wild card. And then you're coming into 2024, <laughs> and it's it. like, wow, I can pencil in Anderson. That's <laughs> uh, that's an easy one to yeah. knock off, you know. So he he was he he became pretty reliable um, 
a year ago. And yeah. so uh, you'll, you'll take any returner at this point. Right? No doubt. Uh, if I were to ask you here, 33 days out at Ames, Iowa, who's the guy taking the first snaps under center for that game? Ooh, this <laughs> is tough. Like, I, I think it's – I'm going to stick with what I've been saying. I think that Trey Feeney at this point is the more mature, established, experienced football player. Uh, he's got more time in the program. He just has always been a really good leader. Um, I think that matters right now as there's like this uncomfortable transition between uh, new offensive staff. I also think there could be a point in which the light flips on for Jerry Kaminsky that we see a different level of quarterback that uh, that Grant Forks has seen in a little bit. Um, will that switch flip on Wednesday? Will that flip on, you know, in October or in 2025? I, I have no idea, but I think, uh, I think it's safe to say that, that Beanie's a pretty good bet to start a names. The decision on it is always the intriguing part. And Bubba said last week, I think to your question, we're not going to know, uh, at, at, you know, until, I don't know, I would think 10 days. What do you think? Ten, a week and a half out before the opener, he's got a name as starter. Don't you think? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> you know, they, they, they like to be uh, non-committal about uh-huh. these things. Right. Um, <laughs> and maybe even a little bit secretive. If, if they think that leaving that as a question mark gives them the slightest bit of an advantage against Iowa state, which is maybe a little comical in Ames, Iowa uh, to think <laughs> um, they'll do it. Right. So uh, part, part of me thinks, yeah, there's no timeline on this thing because they have no intention of naming somebody. Yeah. They're just going to let this play out and, and whatever happens, happens. You alluded to Kaminsky's athleticism. Give us a deep dive a little bit more in that. What's so different that we that UND hasn't had before that he possesses? Yeah, I think UND hasn't had like a truly what I would call a mobile quarterback in a long time, right? Nate Ketteringham was a little statuesque, yep. did not spin around very well. Um, <laughs> Tommy Schuster was elusive against half of the league and um, <laughs> problematic in his elusiveness against the top half of the league, I would say. That's a good point. Yep. Um, I don't think that came naturally to him. Uh, I think Trey Feeney is athletic, but I don't think he's elusive. I think, um, you know, there's a lot to be said about what, when you can get the ball out, where it goes. He's not going to juke anybody, in my opinion. Um I think Kaminsky has some more of that juke and playmaking ability. That's what we saw at Sun Prairie East High School in Wisconsin. That's why he was the Dave Craig winner as Wisconsin's best quarterback as a senior. Um, I just think he has some of that flair for the dramatic that uh, um, will be hard not to at least see what you have at some point. You know, I don't know what that looks like. If you give him full games, if you give him some series to mix him in, um, we're going to find out. We're also going to find out if Isaac Frickie is open to a multiple quarterback system. Does he like the, uh, for lack of a better phrase, the tush push of the Quincy Vaughn uh, <laughs> short yardage situation? Is he a Simon Romfo guy? Yeah. Um, you know, so the quarterback position has a ton of variables to play out here. This is uh, an obvious question. How does all this affect Bo Belquist, Tom? Because Bo is preseason first team, but to me, Somebody's got to get him the ball. That's the that's the big question on how this all affects what number one does on the outside. Yeah, I think you could look at that a couple of ways. Like, well, one, with inexperience at quarterback, you're gonna you're gonna make darn sure it gets to you. Um, if you're Bo Belquist, perhaps you're concerned that that you had a chemistry with Tommy Schuster that you have no idea what kind of chemistry you will have with with the next set of. Uh, of quarterbacks and coaching staff. And I think that's the other thing is, is that Danny Freund had set a kind of bar of expectations on what plays out. Um, does, does Isaac Fricky's offense look the same? Does it feel the same? Does it have the same, you know, run pass uh, breakdown? Right. Um, will they run the ball more? So um, I, I think there's reason for, for a Bo Belquist to be a little, cautious about um how the season might play out um and the other aspect though uh he he's your proven big dog and and uh i think anybody who knows football knows you're going to get him the ball yeah. as many ways possible giving you a name or two younger guys that you've heard or you want to see break through during fall camp yeah I, I think the younger guys really especially on the you know outside the offensive line let's say uh 
uh, defensive side. I think uh, UND has struggled at safety in the last five to eight years. Um, I would say that uh, a guy like a Cole Davis or a Tyler Erkman breaking through would be really important at safety. Um, I think Lance Rucker at outside linebacker is a name that um, if UND is going to get back to the three, four defense being um, to cause havoc on a quarterback, I think uh, a guy like Lance Rucker coming from the outside edge is, is what they need. Um, he, he really showed some signs as a, as a true freshman, um, but they're going to have to have that potential flip to immediate production here. If, uh, if, if they're going to, uh, turn a corner in 2024 schedule doesn't know favors with Iowa oh. state and then Montana. That's a, that's an easy way to, you know, you're fighting for everything come already week three of the season. That's a tough, especially with all the questions we've talked about and you add on that, that's asking an awful lot of Bubba Schweigert's team. And you're, and you're asked to ditch the um, reputation of a, of a program that um, has hit a plateau. Right. So, um, you know, how do you, uh, how do you overcome all these question marks to start beating the top half of the league and not just the bottom half of the league? You know, how do you stop being a top 25 team and start becoming a top 10 team? A lot of questions to answer here. It'll be fun. That's what we could pay the big bucks to try and figure that out. It's great to see you, man. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your last two days of freedom and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Sounds great. We'll talk to you soon, Tom. There he goes. Tom Miller from the Grand Forks Herald joining us. UND opens fall camp on Wednesday. Again, that non-conference schedule we mentioned opened up at Iowa State, home opener Montana. They get Idaho State in Grand Forks, and then uh, they play San Diego out of the Pioneer League. This reminder that UND has four straight home games after their opener, and then they play the Bison after that. So they don't leave, as Bubba mentioned, uh, during a Valley Media Day last week. They don't leave the state of North Dakota for over a month. And then they have a bye after the Bison game, and then they play Northern Iowa. So their their schedule is tilted at home to start. And the back end, that's when it gets difficult. Trips to Youngstown, trip to Terre Haute. Don't roll your eyes at me. It's still the UND barely won there. The Bison barely won there the last time uh, NDSU was there. Trip to Normal as well uh, thrown in. So this was the year they were shooting for, though. They have seven home games. They have both the South Dakota schools in Grand Forks. They have Northern Iowa there. They have Murray there. San Diego, Idaho State, and Montana are the uh, home schedule this year. So it's it's as good as you get if you're UND. You have seven home games. you got to make hay in five of those, which includes probably beating South Dakota because South Dakota State and Montana obviously play the national championship game are both coming to your building this year. Maybe steal one of those. Overdue for a break. We'll come back. we caught up on some twin stuff. Trade deadline rumors. We roll on on a busy Monday. Hot Mike returns. We're back on WDY Extra right after this.